The operational definition for average velocity is simply how far down the road you get, delta x, divided by how much time it took you to get down the road, delta t, with the caveat that delta t is large. And by large we mean large enough that this object, whatever it is we're describing, was able to speed up or slow down during the delta t. Now, there's another type of velocity. If I were to ask you, does this bullet have a velocity at the instant shown in the picture, you might hesitate before answering, worrying that this is a trick question. But if I were to ask the question differently, if I were to say, suppose this bullet had a magic speedometer, a speedometer, right on the side of the bullet. When Doc Edgerton took this picture, would the reading on that speedometer be zero? Or would it be some other value? I think you would quickly agree that it's got to be some other value and it would be a large value. That reading on the speedometer is defined to be the instantaneous velocity of the bullet at the instant that Doc took the picture. Now, let's explore uh, the operational definition of that instantaneous velocity. It looks exactly like the operational definition of average velocity except the caveat now is that delta t has to be small. How small is small enough? The delta t has to be small enough that this object, whatever we're describing, hasn't had enough time to speed up or slow down so that the motion during that that itty bitty time interval uh, appears to be uniform. Now let's explore these two different types of velocity with an example. Suppose that I have a cart on an inclined ramp and that this cart starts from rest and then I, I release it and it speeds up as it goes down the ramp. Suppose that this ramp is two meters long and that it takes three seconds for the cart to get to the bottom of the ramp. If I divide two meters by three seconds I get a velocity 0.67 meters per second and it's obviously an average velocity because three seconds is a long time. It's long enough for this cart to speed up and change its velocity. Now the question is, where would this cart be on the ramp when its instantaneous velocity had the same value as the average velocity, 0.67 meters per second? In other words, if that cart had a magic speedometer on the side of the cart, where would the cart be on that ramp when the speedometer reads 0.67 meters per second? Would it be halfway down the ramp? Would it be in the top half of the ramp? Or would it be in the bottom half of the ramp? At this point you may be sitting back and waiting for me to give the answer. That's not good enough. What I want you to do right now is commit yourself to what you believe the right answer is. In other words, the instantaneous velocity and the average velocity have the same value a halfway down the track, b somewhere in the top half of the track, or c somewhere in the bottom half of the track. If you're with someone right now, tell them what you think the right answer is. Commit yourself to an answer right now. Let's talk about the answer. If that cart starts from rest and speeds up as it goes down the ramp, it's going to be going the very, very fastest at the bottom of the ramp. How fast will that fastest speed be? Well, the average velocity has to occur halfway in between the slowest speed and the fastest speed. That means that the final speed has to be twice the average because halfway between zero and twice the average is the average. But the question is, what do I mean by halfway? Does this happen halfway in time or halfway in distance? We all agree that for part of the journey, the cart's going to be going slower than the average velocity. For part of the journey, it's going to be going faster. But is it halfway in time or halfway in distance? where this transition takes place. If we use the fact that the ramp always has the same slope, 
we can convince ourselves that this cart speeds up with constant acceleration. Constant acceleration looks like a straight line graph on a velocity versus, versus time graph. Every second that goes by, the velocity increases by the same amount. That means that the average velocity, which is halfway between zero and twice the average, is going to occur right there at exactly one and a half seconds into the journey. So for the first second and a half, this card is speeding up from zero to one V average, and for the second half of the journey, the second second and a half, it's going from V average to twice V average. Now, halfway in time is where that occurs, but where does it occur on the ramp? I want you to think about it and once again choose which of those three options you're going to commit to. You now have everything you need to answer the question. The instantaneous velocity and the average velocity have the same value A halfway down the track, B somewhere in the top half of the track, or C somewhere in the bottom half of the track. Did you change your answer? Let's finish the solution. If this is going to take place halfway in time, we simply have to ask ourselves how far does the cart get down the ramp during the first half of the journey, during the first second and a half? And does it travel further in the first half of the journey or the second half of the journey? Well, clearly during the last second and a half, this card is going much, much faster. And so during the first second and a half, it doesn't get halfway down the track. We can show, indeed, that it only gets a quarter of the way down the track in the first second and a half. That's where the average velocity and the instantaneous velocity will have the same value.